Yo, what's going on everybody? This is Brendan back again with another video and it's been quite a while since I've made a video and I'm really excited to be back. Today's video is extra cool. In my last few videos, I've been talking a lot about my RED camera, a lot about editing, post-production workflow, color grading, and in my last video, I talked a lot about dynamic range. And so I kind of wanted to put those concepts all together in this video and do some camera tests. So I definitely wanted to take you guys along for the journey, show you guys some of my tests, and for all you RED users out there, hopefully this will help you guys out. So specifically what I wanted to do is try to test how far I can actually push and pull the exposure in post with my RED camera. Say, if I underexpose something two stops, can I bring it back two stops, and how does that affect the color? How does that affect the contrast and the look? Can I get it to match exactly the look if I were to properly expose it in the first place? or does the image start to break down? How far can I underexpose something or overexpose something, try to pull it back to proper exposure and have it still look good? That's pretty much what this test is all about. So you can't see it's off camera right now, but in this table next to me right here, I have a little subject set up and pretty much what I'm gonna do now is shoot that stuff, show you guys the results of the pushing and pulling exposure stuff in post, and then we'll come back and I'll talk about the results. Hope you guys enjoy. All right, so here we have the original shot. This is the one perfectly exposed with a uh, red log film, ungraded look on it. And here is the three stops underexposed shot, again, red log film. Now we've brought it back and attached a red gamma four look to it. These are both of the shots side by side. And back to the original with a red gamma four look on it. And back to the underexposed pushed version. Okay, so now let's look at the overexposed three stops version. This is the original, and here is the overexposed version. You can already tell, even in red log film, that this is definitely clipping in the highlights. So now, even though it was clipping, we brought it back, and most of the detail is still there. It's pretty impressive looking in Red Gamma 4. Here are both of the shots side by side. You can definitely see the clipping here. Back to the original, just for reference, if you look at the table, if you look at the slate, a lot of clipping, but other than that, it pretty much holds up. All right guys, so we're back, and there you go. Now, as we saw in the tests, I underexposed three stops, and I also overexposed the scene three stops, and brought it back, and ultimately, the underexposed and the overexposed images pretty much matched the perfectly exposed image almost identically, minus um, the main thing, which would be just the change in depth of field because I was adjusting the aperture for those exposures. And as we saw, the only other difference is that in the underexposed clip, there was a little bit more noise, but it was still completely usable and manageable, which is uh, the important part to see, you know, how bad that noise gets, and it really didn't get that bad. And in the overexposed image, obviously the depth of field was shallower, and the optical quality wasn't as nice either, it wasn't as sharp of an image, but Besides the point, um, it still looked pretty much identical, and the only difference that, that I really noticed besides that was the clipping in the highlights. So I noticed that when I overexposed far enough, there were some of those specular highlights that did clip, and when you bring that back down, the clipped stuff doesn't come to, it just kind of stays clipped, so it kind of levels off. So that was something I noticed, but it was actually pretty subtle. It wasn't that bad. It's only one of those things that um, you would notice that it had clipped, only if you're looking at the original perfectly exposed image side by side, back and forth. Um, I still feel like if I had overexposed three stops and that was the only take that I had and I was using this in a professional project, um, I would still feel perfectly comfortable putting that shot in the project. It wouldn't be perfect, but it would still be totally usable. Now I didn't test further than three stops under or three stops above because I just, I knew that that would start clipping the image. It would start completely underexposing to where there is no information. There was no point in testing more than three stops below or above. So for me, it's just super exciting to see and the proof is in the pudding. But hopefully this video helped you out. I know it helped me out at least to understand my own camera system a little bit better and really how far I can push this thing. I don't really intend for all these RED videos that I make to be advertisements for the RED, but it just kind of naturally happens because this is a pretty incredible camera. And uh, yeah, so again, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. I hope it was useful. And if you have any questions, be sure to leave them in the comments. But that's all I have for you guys today. So I thank you for watching and I'll catch you guys soon.